and gentlemen, welcome to Skip Elo Looks at Hollywood. Today's guest is one of Hollywood's great confidential detectives, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fred Otash. And now, let's join Skip and his guest, Mr. Fred Otash, and let's sneak in what they're saying. Fred Otash, private investigator, Hollywood investigator, for many years. Mm -hmm. How long? About 35. 35. Mm -hmm. Tell me something, 35 years investigating all these stars like Sinatra, and, you, and matter of fact, you did Robin Mitchum thing, right? Yes. Tell me about Mitchum. Let's start first with Mitchum. <coughs> well, I was on a police force when Mitchum got arrested. I was on the Los Angeles Police Department. Right. When Mitchum was on a surveillance by a detective named John O'Grady, uh -huh. LAPD Narcotics Squad, and Rudy Diaz. Right. And at that time, Mitchum was involved with Lila Leeds, Vicki Evans, and Robin Ford. And they had them on a surveillance. <coughs> we had an informer. They had a, the LAPD had an informer, which right. was one of the four, which I really don't want to divulge. If I right, mean. of course. And the informer of one of the four that we're talking about uh, alerted the police as to a, uh, a marijuana party that was going to be held uh, mm -hmm. at uh, Big Evans' house. Mm -hmm. Well, the police put them on a surveillance. There was a signal given from inside the house. Uh -huh. Went to make an entry. And so the narcotics squad made an entry, and they arrested Mitchum Ford, uh, Leeds, and Vicki Evans. Right. And he got to jail. How many? He spent three, four days in jail, or something. Great, like? Greatest thing that ever happened to him. It made, it made his career. career. Yeah. He was on a contract to Howard Hughes at that time. Right. <coughs> and his lawyer was Jerry Geisler, who was a who was a, a uh -huh. client of mine. Uh huh. So I, when Jerry called me up, he said, "Come on in the office. I want to talk to you." So I walked in. He said, uh, "He said, what can we do to help this man?" I said, uh, "Really, nothing. He is." Uh -huh. He insulted the police department. He uh -huh. was arrested. Uh -huh. He insulted the chief of police. Uh -huh. He, you know, just acted very disorderly. Right. They had him in custody. Uh -huh. I, there's really no deal to make. And I said, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that uh -huh. that uh, that he got arrested. Uh -huh. But uh, I think Howard Hughes should be very happy. Box office tops, Zoomed. right? Zoomed, Zoomed up. Tell me something confidential. You worked for the Confidential, or what did you do for the Confidential? Yeah, when they got indicted. The magazine, right? When they got, when they, when they got indicted in California, right. uh, Arthur Crowley was the lawyer for the trial, and I was the investigator. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put Hollywood on trial. Uh huh. And we, uh, my office issued 361 subpoenas. Everyone was subpoenaed. Everybody, everybody in Hollywood? Everybody, anyone whose name ever appeared in Confidential magazine uh -huh. was subpoenaed. And at that time, Ronald Reagan was very much involved in the Screen Actors Guild. Mm -hmm. And I remember him giving me a call on the phone asking me if, as a personal favor. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't a good president at Screen Actors Guild, too. Well, remember? I can't make that judgment. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I remember but it. We all know that Regan was an informer for the FBI. Right. Okay, we, that we know. He was a former? An informer. He was FBI. an informer? Oh, yes, of course. Public knowledge. Uh huh. He's the one when they had all those writers on trial. Right. That, uh, that uh, were not allowed to write anymore. Uh huh. Why well, Regan was the one who uh, motivated that. He was anti-communist, and and he was trying to clean the movie industry up, getting rid of all the people in the Communist Party, which I, I support, see. by the way. Right, right, right. I agree with that. Uh -huh. So he worked very closely with the FBI, developing derogatory profiles on people who had communist leanings, mm -hmm. Maltz and mm -hmm. pe people of that caliber. Yeah. But uh, he asked me a, a personal favor that Clark Gable, who we were trying to serve. Uh -huh. we, had, we had his home surrounded out in the valley, the ranch. And uh, he said that he was not feeling well, that uh, as a personal favor, could I allow him to not be subpoenaed for the right. trial? Uh -huh. So I said, well, I'm, my men are going to be going to lunch tomorrow from 1 to 3. Uh -huh. So if he sneaks out of the ranch from 1 to 3, that's up to him. Uh -huh. But we're not going to be covering him from 1 to 3. Uh -huh. So uh, Gable took the hint and ducked out and went to Honolulu. Uh -huh. So we let him off the hook. But <coughs> we didn't leave anybody else off the hook. Who were some of the big stars got on the hook, though, on that? All of them. They all did? Everyone who appeared in Confidential magazine. In that era, if you didn't make Confidential, you hadn't arrived. It's not uh, like the Inquirer, is it? No, no, it's not like no. the Inquirer. No. The Confidential... What's the difference between the Confidential and the Inquirer? There's got to be a difference there. Well, the Conf Confidential was a magazine, uh -huh. number one. It Inquirer. came out once a month. It only came out once a month? It came out once a month. I see. And they had tremendous sources. Uh -huh. I mean, they had sources from they had FBI sources, they had CIA sources, uh -huh. they had LAPD sources, they had Department of Justice sources. They had
sources on uh -huh. developing information, information about right. movie stars. Yes. And they never used a full letter word. And they I never see. showed a pornographic picture. Uh -huh. But uh, Pat Brown was attorney general, mm -hmm. and they indicted Confidential in California. Right, right. Uh, keeping in mind that, again, there was never anything that was written in Confidential that showed any pornography, not uh -huh. like Penthouse and Viva and, and Playboy today in the National uh -huh. Enquirer. Okay. How was Hollywood in those days, though, Fred? I mean, in the 50s? The in greatest, the 40s and I think it, that was the greatest time of Hollywood. It was, wasn't it? I McCombell, was, Cyril. I was on the Vice Squad then. You were on the Hollywood Vice? Yeah, it, uh, from 45 to 55. And it was a great time. Did you bust everybody? You used to see our friends? You had friends. Uh, at, that used time, to at that time, you have to keep in mind that, uh, that if we found someone with a pornographic picture in it, In the procession. We could identify the people in the picture. Yeah. We could get a complaint against them from the district attorney's office and prosecute them. Uh-huh. Felons. We, uh, we had no deep throats around. And if we found someone selling pornographic movies, we arrested them. Uh-huh. And we worked the homosexual detail. We had a homosexual detail. Did we you work on that? Oh, yes. We drilled all holes in all the men's rooms. Dr what? Shows. Say that again. You what? We drilled holes. In you drilled holes? Yeah, in all Why the, would you drill in holes in the, the men's public, rooms? In all the public men's rooms and at ladies' rooms uh -huh. because we received numerous complaints that the homosexuals were molesting children right. in the bathrooms. Now, we never really bothered two consenting adults. Right. But we did bother the ones who preyed on children. By the way, I'm t I might tell you, we caught priests, we caught rabbis, we caught reverends. Did you really? We caught politicians, we caught policemen. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Uh, how did you feel about doing home, that, well, though? Well, well, come on, you're I felt okay about you're, an, you're an ex-Marine, you yeah, know, getting felt, out of the Marines, felt, coming around, being I, a... But I felt okay about that. You did? Yes. Okay. Yes. You have to remember, the LA... Uh, after World War II, most of the men on the police force were veterans of World War II. Right. You know, we didn't put a quail, you know. We didn't join the National Guard. Ah, let's okay, we that brought quail. We volunteered and went uh -huh. in the Marine Corps. We went to uh -huh. combat in the Pacific. After World War II, most of the men on the police force were veterans of World War II. Right. You know, we didn't put a quail, you know. We didn't join the National Guard. Ah, let's okay, we that brought quail. We volunteered and went uh. The Pacific. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <coughs> I don't think there are any National Guardsmen on the Los Angeles Police Department, okay? I'm going to jump. Tell me about of the uh, bush and quail situation. Oh. Come on, you were an ex-Marine, well, I'm, I'm war two, I'm little, I mean, I'm what, was war I'm a disappointed in Bush, who, who was formerly the head of our CIA. Right. Well, disappointed in the background check that he supposedly done on quail. Right. And I think he missed the boat by not really looking at the negatives of a man who's, who might, by some chance, become the president if something happened to Bush. Right. You know, it's always possible. Most presidents of the United States, people have tried to kill, okay? You think uh -huh. about it. Uh, <clears throat> he, Quail and Bush can scream and yell about the Dan Rathers and the Ted Koppels and all the people on uh -huh. ABC, CBS, and NBC, but you know something? They're out of line. They chose to be public figures, and we, the public, have a right to know. I think so, we too. We have a right to know. Sinatra's movements 24 hours a day. 
We have a right to know bushes moving 24 uh -huh. hours a day, uh -huh. carcasses, quails, etc. We have a right to know the background of these people. I see. Okay? Uh -huh. These people are going to run our country. <clears throat> I see. If we... Quail's a womanizer, that should come out. He did have, didn't he? Well, there Tell was me about Quail's. Some rumor about he with a couple of other gentlemen down in Florida on a golf uh, stint. Right. Where he allegedly he was involved with some uh, lobbyists, a, a beautiful woman lobbyist. Right. Well, whether it's true or not is not important. I, I feel strongly that there'll probably be other information coming out about the quails of the world. Uh huh. Beautiful woman lobbyist. Right. Well, whether it's true or not is not important. I, I feel strongly that there'll probably be other information coming out about the quails of the world. Uh huh. Okay. Bush has been tried and proven. I think Bush has made a tremendous error by really not delving into the background of quail. Don't you think he was afraid not to get Dole because Dole was so powerful? And, uh, you he, know. He may wind up getting Dole. I hope so. <laughs> I'd like to see that. I really do. You know, he may, he may and, and, you know, getting it to. I'm not putting down the National Guard, right? But, I, uh, but, but his brother went in the Marine Corps, right? And he went to the National Guard. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you so, mean. So, but he's just saying yeah. National Guard. There's nothing wrong to be in the National Guard. I'd say there was. But now, if you're in the National Guard and use political influence to get in the National Guard, uh huh, to avoid combat, right? Or the chance of going to Vietnam. How do you feel about that? You're an ex-Marine. How would you feel about that if he did that? I, uh, I'm not voting for him. I, I, I would have voted, if I, could, if I could vote for Bush, I'd vote for Bush without voting for Quayle. Uh -huh. I don't know how you do that. I see, see, I'm registered as an independent. I see. I vote for the party and I vote for the issue. And let me, let me make one point with you. Uh, do that. I see, I'm registered as an independent. I see. I vote for the party and I vote for the issue. And let me let me make one point with you, uh, Skippy. Yep. I've done a lot of background checks yep. in my time on politicians. I work for the and the Democrats. I bid, did background checks on George Murphy when uh -huh. he ran for senator. Right. I've done background checks on Ronald Reagan, who I, who I tell you is clean as clean as white snow. He is clean. Yes, he is. That's He's right, Mr. Clean. Yes. Yeah. I've done background checks on Stanley Mosk, who's on our Supreme Court in the uh, state of California. Uh huh. I've done background checks on a lot of people. The Kennedys, by the way. You've done so, that? Yes, I did. And we dug up information that the FBI didn't find. Right. CIA, right. Army Intelligence. Uh -huh. And other intelligence sources didn't find. Why? Because we had access to a lot of information from sources that they right. don't have. Uh -huh. When you go, when you look at the, when you look at the files of confidential, uh -huh. who wrote about, who wrote about Kennedy, by the way. Right. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there. The people who, who talk to confidential about the Kennedys are not going to sit there and talk to some FBI man. Oh, I see. I see. So. out there. I see. I see. So there are sources out there you can develop to develop uh -huh. a derogatory profile. Right, right. 
On any of us. Listen, we all I have know. skeletons. I'm Marilyn Monroe. Right. Kennedy's. Marilyn Monroe. Hello. Tell me. That's been beaten to death, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Did she die? Do you think she was di she died over uh, I know sleeping for, I, or was I know, she murdered or what do you I think? I know for a fact that she committed suicide. She did commit suicide. I was very much involved in that case at, even at that night with right. Peter Lawford. She really? was a girl that felt that she was passed around, she was used and abused by everyone, that, uh, that she had nothing for her to live for. And it's not uncommon. Uh -huh. Judy Garland was a client of mine. Well, she Judy did Garland was a client of yours? Yeah, she did herself in. Mal Monroe did herself uh -huh. in. You've got a lot of movie stars who, and politicians and people who are disturbed emotionally, mm -hmm. who did themselves in. Is Judy Garland disturbed emotionally? Come on, Fred. You you said yeah, you, she, she was. was. I, yeah, I lived in her house for 30 days before, before she did a movie called *The Star Was Born*. We kept we took her off drugs, we took her off the booze. Uh -huh. uh, and a very funny thing that I never discussed: when we were living at her home, Jack Kennedy used to call her about uh -huh. every 10 days, and he'd say, "Sing me a song." Did and he she really? Used to sing him a song over the telephone. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember a couple of times I picked up the phone and he said, this is the president. <laughs> can, I, can I speak to Judy Garland? Uh -huh. Yeah, for certainly. But <laughs> what song did she say? What was his favorite? Over the Rainbow. Oh, well, well, you know, oh, just whatever, any, any? whatever she had an attitude that she wanted to sing at that uh -huh. time. She's a fabulous girl. Taking pills constantly and drinking? Yeah, and drinking booze. But she, you know, she loved her children. She really loved Sid Luft also uh -huh. and, and Manelli. She, you know, she was a fabulous human being. So you know Hollywood pretty well, don't you, well, uh, Fred Otesh? Well, I started here in 1945. 45. Yeah. I've seen I've seen a lot of now you're Jimmy living Garners and uh -huh. Javer Jansons and Wade Prestons and, uh -huh. and and all the movie stars that are big stars today were all bums like I was. Are I you a good drinker, a man drinker like John drink. Wayne and all those? Well, John Wayne, I used to drink with John and all those people. I used to drink with John in, in Rome when he did Cast a Giant Shadow. Uh huh. Yeah, we had a few good drunk, drunken nights. Fred Otash, you are living and calm. Yes. Tell Cast a giant shadow. Uh huh. A few good drunk. Fred Otash, you are living and calm. Yes. Tell me about it. I love it. Uh, I live that. in Cannes six months a year. Six months? You're writing a book? I like the weather. I'm writing a book. Tell me about the book. Well, the book involves the Monroe Kennedy case, which was one of the cases I worked. Right. It involves the Rock Hudson, Phyllis uh, Gates case, his wife. Stop. Which, which is Phyllis, the case I work. Yeah, Phyllis, yeah, Phyllis Gates and Rock Hudson. Married to Rock Hudson. Right. Yeah, they, she, was that, was was that set up marriage or was it yes, true? In my opinion, yeah. it was a set up marriage. It was. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and the funny part about it was Phyllis wrote a book about her, her uh, marriage to Rock Hudson. She never mentioned me as her detective or uh -huh. Arthur Crowley as her lawyer. Uh -huh. Maybe she was ashamed that we had that she had Arthur Crowley and Fred Otash as her attorney. Is he one of the best lawyers around? One of the best around. Is he really? Yeah. What makes him the best, Fred Otash? Because he takes his profession serious. I was there this weekend at his home. He was with depositions, studying depositions all weekend. I mean, I'm talking uh -huh. about 10, 12. Four. He probably is one of the most prepared lawyers I've ever worked for. Uh huh. I mean, he really is prepared. Does his home. Oh, yes, she does. Uh huh. Yes, she does. So, more. Tell me about your book, more. I gotta know. Well, <coughs> it's going to involve Betty Davis's case, a divorce case I work. It's Betty Davis's divorce. Gary, case. Gary, Gary and, and Merrill, yeah. Merrill in her. Merrill. Yeah. What happened about that? Just <coughs> short. He just doing a lot of drinking, a lot of carousing, and. Um, she hired you. Yes. Yeah. What happened about that? 
just short. And he just doing a lot of drinking, a lot of carousing, and uh, you? Yes. So, more. tell me about your book, more. i got to know. Well, <coughs> it's going to involve Betty Davis's case, the divorce case I work. It's Betty Davis is Gary, Gary, Gary and Merrill, yeah. Merrill in her? Merrill, yes. What happened about that? Just <coughs> short. He just doing a lot of drinking, a lot of carousing. And... Uh, She hired you. Yes. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, again, I. How do you follow these people as an investigator? How do you, Fred Otesh? Sometimes Otesh you have to use all. All depends on what they're. What is? I mean. Sometimes you have to use helicopters. How do you know sometimes, where they're going? Sometimes you pick the lock of that truck and shove a midget in the truck, actually. Do you really? Yes, and when the car stops, you uh, click the door open and get out of the truck and call us when he hits. When he How do you feel him. about traveling, going, doing things like that about people, Fred Otash? <laughs> or is it just a job for you? Well, it's how do I feel about people in When I listen, when I was in private practice, I worked for the White House. I worked for government agencies. I worked for uh -huh. the mafia. You, know, you worked has, for the mafia. Everyone has a right to their day in court. Everyone, that's that's the that's the basis of our country. legal system. You have a right to a day in court. I see. So I spent 10 years putting people in jail, and I spent the next 20 years keeping them out of jail. How about some of the people that you put in jail and came after 10 years? Are they looking for Fed Otash or? In a legal system, you have a right to a day in court. I see. So I spent 10 years putting people in jail, and I spent the next 20 years keeping them out of jail. How about some of the people that put in jail and came out after 10 years? Are they looking for Fred Otash? Or no. Are they mad at Fred Otash? No. Or they know it's, you did it? Or no. you, the funny thing about someone who you apprehended, if you apprehended fair and square, like the right. mafia, the mafia does not kill, or organized crime members do not kill FBI agents. They don't. They don't kill policemen, okay? But they'll kill an informer. I see. You follow me? Uh-huh. That's why you have the Marshal Protector Plan. Mm -hmm. uh, they respect law and order. I see. Mickey Cohn and I are very good friends, but Mickey knew that if I ever had a chance, I'd put him in jail, and I finally did. Mickey Cohn, yes, you, yes, you yes. put him in jail? Yes, I did. But so how, how did you do that, Trent? Well, he, we did a background check on him on, on the amount of money he spent every day. We uh -huh. went to his tailor, we went to the liquor store, we went to the restaurants, we went to the maitre d's, the parking lot boys. Uh -huh. We went to the place where he had his clothes cleaned, and we did a complete financial review of the amount of money he spent. Right. And it, 
we established he spent about $20 million a year. Mm -hmm. And he filed an income tax return showing 46000 Well, 46 doesn't make it, you know, right. for what, we, what we've established, all the money he spent. Uh -huh. So he got indicted for income tax evasion. Uh -huh. And he got convicted. I see. So, you know. There but I understand he's a nice guy, though. Fabulous guy. I, we, I used to have a lot of fun with him uh -huh. in the restaurant. Then that was again the days of Cyril Macumbo, Trocadero Interlude, etc. By the way, yeah, uh, you've had 600 guests on your show. I've had about 600 guests and on my show. CNN You're right. The investigator. You're an invest Hollywood. to do a background check on you. You've done a background check on me? Yes, and I would like to. What do you uh, mean? Don't scare me now. No, no, <laughs> but, no we're not going to get into no. your personal sex oh. life, Skippy. No, don't. I know you're getting married to Jeannie Wallace. That's right. Yes. But I don't put my glasses on because I got my report here. What do you mean? Uh, things I, I have found out about you, and I think we should talk about you. You're going to talk about me? I would like to talk <laughs> about you. I, like, I, I have information here about the age of 12. You appear with your aunt Sadie Cohen and Sammy's Barry Follies. I'd like to ha tell me about that. What do you mean? Oh, at the age of twelve. Yeah, yeah I, tell me about. I that. was at Sammy's Bowery Follies when I was twelve years old, yeah. and uh, that's it. You know, I was working with my aunt. I was doing the newsboy, singing newsboy routine. I met Sammy Futes, who owned the place, Betsy and Sammy, and they asked me if I would uh, be a singing newsboy. I did Gus Edwards things, coming out in knickers and tennis shoes and a little cap, mm -hmm. dirty face. Mm -hmm. and I used to do all those uh, Gus Edwards songs. The Jerry Vale, then, Jerry Vale, who's a friend of mine. Cherry, yeah. Normally you open the, the show for him at Don Rickles and Shaky Green. They're all <laughs> friends of my personal. That's people. later in my well, year. I, I know, worked I, as a I comic. Know. Yeah, I, I, I work with comic. Don at the um, Wayne Room in uh, Washington. He yeah. was doing Glasshead Rickles, but and I was a comic there. Then I went through all the mortars in the oh, studios, yeah. in the studios, and I found out that you made a lot of films. Yeah, you made yeah, films. Uh, my first movie Come was Come Along's Closet, 20th Century. No, Fox. that's later. Yeah. I, just my first movie was If the. Sh uh, small Town Girl with Jane Powell. My God. What Picking the Oranges. That? Yeah. And then I did uh, Buckle Down When Sucky, Best Foot Forward, and I did all those things. That's when yeah, I was but a I kid. See, but I see a bunch here. I see the world's Come on, greatest Fred. <laughs> Don't no, interview see, me. No, I see the world's greatest lover. Right, that's with Gene Weiler. Gene I Weiler. played the makeup okay. guy in, in that film. How about Black Shampoo is a movie you worked in? Uh, I forget about that movie. You want to forget that? You got bad ratings? <laughs> no. Mustang Films. Who was Mustang Films? <laughs> <laughs> Mustang Ranch or that's Mustang right. Nevada? No. But uh, Camera's Dolce Closet, I just finished. Yeah, La Dolce Vita. I was a camera boy. I was in Rome working. Yeah, well, and Eckberg and I used to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Did you really? Oh, sure. She's a nice oh, lady, isn't she? Girl. Yeah, I was in, a, in La Dolce Vita. Well, you know what blows me away? What? That I, when I found, when I started pulling all this in from the morgues, I found out that... Where do you get all this information? Come on. No, I'm very <laughs> serious. If I'm wrong, correct me. No, you're right so okay, far. <laughs> I, 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 I find out you worked in Germany, in Canada. Ah. Uh, okay. I was with the Ebley brothers and Phil and... Boy, I was in Rome working. Yeah, well, and I used to be boyfriend. Sure. She's a nice oh, lady, isn't she? Girl. Yeah, I was in a, a Loto Chavita. Well, you know what blows me away? What? That I, when I found, when I started pulling all this in from the morgues, I found out that... Where do you get all this information? Come on. No, I'm very <laughs> serious. If I'm wrong...
No, you're right so okay, far. <laughs> I, I, I find out you worked in Germany, in Canada. Ah. Uh, okay. I was with the Ebley brothers and Phil and John. I did the okay. American bases, you special in service. Special service. I worked in Canada, yeah. Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. Right. Toronto. Okay. <laughs> then the Far East Japan with Pat Boone. Oh, that's that's in American military shows again. Okay. That's, that's in fine. Vietnam War. I went back. Uh, Germany and Italy with uh, Pat Suzuki. Yeah, Pat, you know, that's yeah. right. These are all American bases, Fred. I did, I come know, on, don't. That, I did the American bases with these people. Yeah, I was an yeah, MC yeah, comedian. and with Dick Haynes, and Johnny Ray, yeah, and Joni James, and Pinky Lee. Joni James, now wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Joni James, yeah, I want to tell you something. Chicago, Illinois, uh -huh. is when I started as a comedian. And I worked, I worked a strip club there called the Silver Frolics. And Harry Bosch was the owner in Chicago. And I uh, started there, I was working, I was living at the Croydon Hotel, and I was working seven days a week at the Silver Frolics, and I met a girl by the name of Joni James. Her name was Joni Battles, mm -hmm. and she wanted to be a singer, and we went to see Patti Page, and she was doing uh, some show at the Chicago Theater, and Joni came out of the theater, and she says, I'm going to be a star there, and I says, well, really, Miss James? And that's where she got the name, Joni James. A friend of mine, Frankie Scott, and her, we, d we gave her that name. And that's Chicago. Joni James became a big star after that, about a year after that. You know, you Never find out what people like Jerry Vale is the greatest. What? Go ahead. We're a good friend of mine. You, I went through SAG, AFTRA, AGVA. Did Yes, and I went through a lot of the library, because that's the research you do. Uh -huh. See, if you are going to be a candidate, I'd have more is than... Is that how you get all my information? Yes, uh, you knew everything yes. about me, Fred. But I also know, <laughs> I also know, which is interesting. What? That in France, you studied to be a mime, Paris, France. I studied mime, yeah. I, I acting, was living there. Acting. You studied at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in, in London. I studied at RADA. Okay. I was going there. John F. Kennedy was assassinated Blue when Man. I was working at a club yeah. called the Blue Angel uh -huh. in, in the Mayfair area. And I was working uh, with Noel Harris. He mm -hmm. was the co I was the uh, he was the compere, mm -hmm. and he was playing guitar and sing, doing folk songs. Mm -hmm. That's in '63. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. 1963. And you, you also sing. I was working uh, with Noel Harris. He mm -hmm. was the co I was the uh, he was the compere, mm -hmm. and he was playing guitar and sing, doing folk songs. Mm -hmm. That's in '63. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. 1963. And you, you also sing. God, you know, yeah, I do well, a lot of singing. I'll tell you how it happened. When I was at Nicky Blair's the other night, I had a date. I had dinner with John Ferraro, who's the president of our city council. He used right. to be the police commissioner when I was a policeman. John Ferraro. Yeah, He's married to a wonderful lady, isn't she? But he was a police commissioner when I was a policeman. Right. And he. When he was a police commissioner, I got suspended for 60 days. Doing some stupid things when right. I was a police officer. So right. I didn't talk about myself, the bad things I've done. But I saw you there with, with S Sylvester Stallone's mother. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Uh -huh. Who threw you, threw you a wedding reception. That's right. At Nikki Blair's. I didn't see you there. No, but I saw you. <laughs> but I saw you. I didn't see you. But yeah, I, I was. But I Jacqueline, we had a good time that evening. But Why? You how know, come you didn't say hello? Well, because I didn't want you. It was a lot. I was there. Yeah, well, she's Jacqueline. I wasn't there to look and watch you. Yeah. I felt offended by the way that I wasn't invited. She's a because, lovely you know, lady. She is. I mean, uh, she's a, she. She already made up the guest list, right? Uh, Watch you. Yeah, I felt offended by the way that I wasn't invited. She's a lovely lady. Know. She is. I uh, mean, she's a, she. She already made up the guest list, right? 
You sure would have invited me if you had, I'm quite sure. Come on, I want to talk about this stuff. I want to talk, come on, Fred, 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 Fred. come on. No, I want to talk about, on come on, I, I found please. Out, no, let me tell you what, how, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I admire You're about You're embarrassing you. me now. No, I'm not. Come on. The, 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 your wife-to-be, Jeannie Wallace, right. was married to, to Frank Chateau and then Cornell Wilde. And you and Cornell Wilde <laughs> had dinner together. You're embarrassing me. Well, yeah. What did you talk about? What, what we had dinner at, at Carlos about? and Charlie's and yeah. uh, his lovely lady and myself, and uh, we were just talking. That's all. We had a nice I've, dinner. I've seen and, some of your talent shows at, the, at the Carlos and Charlie's. No, I'm not there at Carlos and Charlie's. I know, but I I'm saw the, some of your talent yeah. shows at Carlos I'm at the and comedy Charlie's. store now yeah, well, on well, Tuesday I'll nights. I'll have to walk <laughs> in there if I can get in. <laughs> maybe you Fred, tell maybe, me. Well. When are you leaving for Con? Come on. No, when are you leaving for Con? That's it. I'm leaving for Con, believe it or not, this coming Thursday. Ah. And I'm working on my book there. But, you uh -huh. know, I, I want to tell you something. And I'm, I'm only saying this because I've been in Hollywood all my life. And I've, I've been sat, here, too. I've sat in the White House. I've sat with the mafia dens. I've sat with everyone uh -huh. in the movie business. Uh -huh. From Louis B. Mayer to Harry Cohen, et cetera, okay? And I want to tell you something. I'm impressed, seriously, oh, thank by you. your background. Well, I've, I've entertained. You know See, I was I like away from you know America like 20 years. You have to understand, I've been away that. for 20 years. I was entertaining the troops in Germany and France and, and also with the Far East. And then I went to Australia, and I, got, I did all the RSL clubs in Australia. And when I returned after the Vietnam situation, I didn't know what to do. So you know what I did? I formed a little showcase at the E Little Club for Marshall Wetson. So Marshall said, Skippy, why don't you stay here? Don't go on the road anymore. So that's where I've been. I've been here ever since. I've been staying, doing showcases around Los Angeles. Angeles. Then I met someone said, why don't you do a talk show? Here I'm having fun doing talk shows, interviewing people that I love. Wetson. So Marshall said, Skippy, why don't you stay here? Or don't go on the road anymore. So that's where I've been. I've been here ever since. I've been staying, doing showcases around Los Angeles. Then I met someone said, why don't you do a talk show? Here I'm having fun doing talk shows, interviewing people that I love to be with, I've always been with, and that's why I did it. So Fred, please, let's not talk about okay, this anymore. Okay, we won't talk about that. Let's talk But now. tell me, let's I want to... Uh, there's a reason why I did this, too. Why? It took, oh. me, it took me about five days to do a background on you. I've got tons of information. Is that how you get background yes, set? Yes, but I, I want to make a point. Yeah. Here we have man, a man, again, like George Bush. Right. He was a hero. Right. He flew 52 combat missions. Right. Okay? He was rescued by an American submarine when he was shot down. Right. He was a man who, had, who was a shoo in to become president of the United States. Right. And he takes this younger-looking guy, 41 years old, okay, and who comes from a very wealthy family, and he chooses him over people who have tremendous experience. as his running mate. And uh, forget that part. You know, I, every time I think of Watergate, I think of the stupidity of huh. the Nixon White House right. that they hired a bunch of t top guys, by the way. Right. But they got caught. You know something? I've done about 25 Watergates and I never got caught. I probably have tapped 600 telephones in every country in the world and never got caught. Now, I've been in jail a couple of times, uh -huh. but I was out within 24 hours. It's... it's you cannot tap people's phones nowadays. Of course you can. You can. Of course you can. All day long. People are recording people's phones. You can wire up your car. Uh -huh. You know, we, we had, uh, in fact, it came out some former, former, former CIA man right. informed that the CIA man had one of the rules of Russia's uh -huh. limousine uh -huh. wiring. Uh -huh. But the danger of the intelligence today, when we talk about keeping secrets, we can't keep secrets in this country. We can't keep the atom bomb secrets. What is happening to the American secrets. government right now? Come on, tell me. We're in I a have turmoil. To. We are. Yeah, you're in a turmoil. You have. So you think the so you think the Democrats are going to get in then? I got a funny feeling that uh, George Bush made a very unless, big mistake. Yeah, you know, I think he, I think he still has time to unwind it. Okay. How could he unwind it? I think there's going to be a lot of derogatory information coming out when you start insulting the press. 
Forget right. it. You uh -huh. got a problem because you know the Dan Coppels and these people are very fine investigators. Right. Let me tell you, they, I did a I did a show for twenty for twenty twenty twenty. Yeah. Right. And I did it, and it was about the Kennedy Moreau relationship. And it was a mm -hmm. fabulous show. Uh huh. In fact, Phyllis Ch uh, uh, Chase was the one who interviewed me. Right. She resigned because they killed the show for political reasons. Did they really? And, and uh, Hernando uh, uh, Gerardo quit also. They won't air it? Well, it'll be aired one day. Oh, okay. But my information out of ABC. Right was that it was so damaging uh -huh. to the Kennedy family, okay? Yeah. Yeah, because it was documented 100%. Barbara Walters and Hugh Downs said it was probably the most documented show ever done right. on 2020. And they uh, appeared in front of People Magazine, Life Magazine, Look Magazine, uh -huh. who criticized Ruin Knowledge for killing mm -hmm. the show. I see. But I get through my intelligence sources, uh, and I was upset that they killed the show by now. I see. Uh, because I, I came from Cannes, I went to New York, uh -huh. I spent mm -hmm. many days in New York doing, right. doing, the, doing the 2020 show. But I, it was, I was told that Teddy Kennedy uh, made a deal with ABC. And Ted deal, Kennedy? Yeah, the deal was that if you promise us you're not going to run for president, okay, yeah. we will kill the show. You're kidding. Yes. And, and, you know, somewhere down the line we're going to release the show. Yes. Now, BBC came along and did the same show. Mm -hmm. And they, they showed that uh -huh. all over the world. It showed in 116 different countries. Now, I don't...